which is not surprising because when you do two passes with a nice fine point, you have a much better chance of hitting all the fungus. So um, the efficacy improved um, dramatically when you did um, two passes versus one pass, three times more clear nail in the group that had two passes versus one pass. Third pinpoint study, um, this one is 139 patients, uh, randomized double-blinded prospective study, four centers this time, um, six-month data is analyzed, 12-month data is, um, should be coming out very shortly, um, planimetry, which is a uh, computer technique to make measurements was used, blinded evaluators again, quality of life survey, and clinical improvement was the primary endpoint. Um, 133 subjects completed the study. Um, at three of the four sites, there was over 15 uh, square millimeters of clear nail after 24 weeks um, for the treated group and only three millimeters or less for the untreated group. 71% success rate in this study. Primary adverse events, again, were some slight pain and some slight erythema. So just to summarize, um, these are the devices that are out there, the, the most commonly used devices. Um, FDA clearance only for pinpointing Qterra. Um, so far, three studies with a sum total of um, over 200 patients. Um, controlled application. Um, uh, yes, you can. You, you have very fine control with the pinpoint device with the no, no beyond, with the no beyond device. Um, you shoot the whole nail all at one time. So I guess that falls under controlled application. Improved outcome. Uh, only the first two have any peer-reviewed published data so far. As far as evaluation of laser systems is concerned, the FDA standards um, for approval appear to be in development. Um, the idea of curing fungus is no longer part of the FDA's language. They look at controlling fungus, and I think that is the appropriate um, approach. I don't think that you can ever completely cure the fungus, but I think you can certainly get dramatic improvement in your patients. Clinical treatment leads um, to improved appearance, and I think that's probably much more meaningful um, both to the patients and to the FDA than establishing a mycologic cure. Uh, those of you that do fungal nail cultures in your office and have tried to get approval for Lamisil for your patients probably have experienced that frustration where you know you've done a good culture. Clinically, there's no doubt in your mind that it's a fungus and yet it still comes back negative because of the high rate of false negatives. So the idea of a mycologic cure really um, I think takes a backseat to the clearance and the, and the clinical cure. Lasers clearly fill a void in the treatment options. There's no systemic dangers. Um, clinically proven now to be effective. Subsequent treatments can be administered with insignificant risks. So if a patient needs a, treat, a treatment touch-up, you can easily do that, especially with a system like this where you're not paying on a per-treatment basis. And so lasers satisfy the need for a new treatment option. So we're, we're just about to embark on a new clinical study. Um, prospective uh, randomized study um, using uh, patients that have failed Lamisil. It's currently in the final stages, <coughs> the final stages of, um, of the uh, um, IRB approval. This is this is a, a real study with uh, informed consents and a true randomization scheme. And um, I think that you'll you'll find that the data will be highly reliable. And uh, I think we're all very interested to see how patients who have failed Lamisil will do with uh, laser treatment. Um, I think that this treatment is optimal. I think the outside-in approach makes a lot of sense, particularly if your laser is able to penetrate down to the space between the nail and the nail bed. Um, and in that, in that uh, vein, I do think that there's some uh, value to doing some debridement prior to treatment. Um, I also recommend that when we do laser for our patients that we treat the adjacent skin. I have them use topical over-the-counter antifungals. I usually use Lamisil AT. I also have them and I have them put that on the skin, not on the nails, um, on a daily basis for the first three months. <coughs> I also rec recommend to them that they spray their shoes with Tinactin or another similar um, antifungal. I recommend once a week for the shoes that they're wearing on a regular basis. So in conclusion, I'd like to just say that laser treatment for onychomycosis has great promise for the future. Um, each system differs, I think, dramatically in their mechanism of action. And you should really look at the, the devices that have data. Um, don't be taken in by um, high-powered devices because um, you don't need high power. It doesn't enhance the treatment process in any way. And in fact, it can be detrimental if it causes a burden to the patient. Preliminary data indicates that the laser is much more successful in topicals. 
and it appears to be equal, if not better, than the older devices. And I'd like to thank you. Um, we're going to have. Uh, <laughs> thanks. We're going to have. Uh,